Uh, well, that was the question I wanted to know. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, they uh, uh, obviously, they didn't say uh, we're, you know, covert agents of the Ministry of State Security when they contacted me. Uh, what they said was uh, that they were from a uh, a political uh, a risk consulting group, which is uh, uh, kind of a common uh, business. Uh, uh, I've been contacted by legitimate ones before. Uh, in Asia, they, they, they're called risk analysis groups, and they're generally hired by... Uh, say companies who are want to do business in a company in a country uh, yes. and they uh, they are they want to know you know what the situation is uh, maybe they want to know uh, whether their business partner is up to no kind of no good uh, they want to know what the general economic conditions are what stood out for this first of all was that uh, it was from Shanghai in China, and they had no interest in economic issues. Almost all of the clients of a, these political risk analysis groups are uh, really interested in uh, uh, economics. That's their 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 businesses. They're trying to make money. Uh, these these questions had nothing to do with businesses. Uh, they they. Uh, had to do with uh, very hot button uh, uh, political issues between the U.S. and China, uh, and uh, so that immediately struck me as unusual. Uh, yes. And so I, I've actually done some work for uh, legitimate political risk analysis groups before, uh, based in Asia. Because I spent 25 years as a as a foreign correspondent in Asia, and uh, so I contacted a couple of these guys that, and these companies, and uh, they'd never heard of this company. Uh, and I I did just your normal uh, basic due diligence, you know, googling who this Shanghai Pacific strategy consulting company was and they didn't they didn't exist uh, yeah. there there you know there was no footprint of, of their existing so uh, I thought well this is interesting uh, I immediately red flags went off they, they, they were very amateurish really uh, it was my my first thought is as a journalist hey this could be a good story you know that look <laughs> yeah. look to me like, like the Chinese uh, are trying to recruit me as a spy, uh, and my second thought is uh, was well, wait, hold, 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 hold the fuck on for a second here, because uh, you know you get involved in that murky world, and you got all kinds of people on the, all both teams and all teams who who uh, are up to no good and and. Uh, and misinterpret stuff. Yes. Uh, so uh, my my work in Asia for you know twenty five years, uh, I covered primarily wars and, and countries in conflict and turmoil. I lived in Cambodia for many years, and I covered North Korea and uh, Burma and other places. And uh, so I have a lot of uh, sources in uh, the intelligence world. So I sent out a couple messages to them saying, you know, oh, what's going on here? And immediately uh, the response was, you need to be very careful. These guys are are you know, not who they say they are. So I thought, well, I, I'd like to figure out who they are. So that began a process of, of uh, trying to do just that, to figure out who they are. And it became very clear very quickly that uh, they were trying to recruit me as a as a uh, as a spy, uh, which kind of pissed me off. Frankly, yeah. <laughs> I, I I I learned pretty quickly that this is very 
common. Uh, and, and make no mistake about it, all sides do the same thing, you know. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an American. You know, the Americans do, do the same thing in yes. China. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the Chinese do it to the Americans. And everyone else, you know, every intelligence service, including uh, Italy or Spain, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they do the same thing. That's their I'm job. Sure uh, about this. So uh, it's not that unusual. But these guys were real amateurish. Uh, was my thought, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not a spy, so I don't, I don't know how this works, but, uh, or I didn't know how it works, I know a little bit better now, but apparently it's it's uh, quite common that the, that the, uh, uh, the, the, the Chinese uh, uh, cast a wide net, you know, like fishing, uh, and so whatever they can pull in, uh, uh, that can sometimes be very uh, fruitful uh, and useful for them. Uh, and so if, if they, you know, reach out to someone like me and it doesn't work out, they don't really care, really. Uh, uh, but I was, say, I was struck by how uh, bold, because uh, this was all in writing, right? Uh, yes. They, they, they you, you need this, this, this you never they, they went to China, right? During this conversation. Well, I, I, I've been to China many times, but but I I did not go to China. That was the one thing I was specifically warned about uh, yeah. very seriously by uh, people who I consider friends who who are intelligence agents. They they were very concerned that uh, if you go to their turf, if you go to their their territory. Yeah. then you're entering into a world of which can cause you big, big problems. Yes. Uh, and, and so I actually negotiated with them to meet in a neutral country. Uh, the two countries were Singapore and Thailand, both of which I'm familiar with, and both of which are kind of neutral. You know, the, uh, the, the Chinese and the Americans and all kinds of other people operate yes. in those countries pretty freely. And so... Uh, but I, I was, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I don't have it and don't and didn't have the resources to confirm who these people actually were. Because remember, at the end of the day, all I really had was a fake names and Gmail addresses, right? Yes. Uh, it, at the end of the day, that's that's what I had. So, so I I, uh, uh, I contacted uh, intelligence sources uh, that I know who do this for a living, uh, focused on China, and they uh, they did whatever they do, and they they confirmed that these were agents of the Ministry of State Security, Shanghai Bureau, which uh, for some reason the Shanghai Bureau. Uh, is very, very active in recruiting foreigners. Uh, probably, I don't know how, f I gather you focus on China, right, Mario? So, so I, I presume you know Shanghai. It's a, you know, it's an international city. Lots of businessmen work out of there. Um, and a apparently they target foreigners regularly. Uh, and I do know that they target I live in Washington, D.C., and they, they target uh, people here all the time, particularly in uh, think tanks and uh, academia here in Washington, which is, you know, what Washington's an interesting city. It's got lots of people from all over the world uh, here, up to all kinds of no good, including my president. <laughs> God knows what he's doing, but anyways, uh, uh, so they target people uh, who m probably have no idea that they're even being recruited. Yes, exactly. Age. I mean, ima imagine if you're a young, recent college graduate in your early 20s, and you get some message from somebody saying they want to pay you to uh, because you're the you know, second coming of Jesus Christ, and you know you're brilliant, and you know you know everything, and uh, and uh, they they 
they say they, they want to pay you for your for your work. Uh, I, I have no doubt, and I know I know for a fact it's a major concern, uh, at least U.S. intelligence, that that these kind of people are being targeted, and and they probably don't even know they're working for Chinese intelligence. Yeah. They, it's, it's, that's uh, you know obviously these guys didn't say they were Ministry of State Security, but I did have it confirmed one hundred percent exactly who they who they were, and uh, I, I was taken aback by how many Americans have been arrested uh, in just the last few years. I didn't, I wasn't aware of this uh, for uh, uh, spying for the Chinese or, or whatever uh, derivation of spying uh, you want to call it. Uh, there's been like 57 Americans who are in yes. federal prison, you know, so it's it's common, and uh, uh, I thought, well, you know, it's kind of a good story, and uh, so I, I tried to string them along. Uh, I, I did not meet them, uh, and I uh, obviously didn't take money uh, from them, uh, but I did keep a communication with them going on for more than a year, and, uh, you know, they were very bold. They were specifically asked me to uh, uh, steal, uh, you know, classified information from uh, the U.S. federal government <laughs> and, 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 and give it to them. You know, I, I saw that question that you, you, you sent, sent to me, and it's an excellent question. I don't know. Uh, I, I presume that they do because all spy agencies, you know, they 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 they're up to all kinds of no good. <laughs> it doesn't matter what team you're working for. But uh, so I presume that they they spread misinformation. These guys, my guess and what I'm told, were their job is to provide raw intelligence. They're analysts essentially. Uh, and then they have other other uh, units that are get up to things like spreading in yeah, misinformation. Yeah. I, I didn't find these guys to be very, uh, like I say, sophisticated. Uh, but I'm told that <laughs> I'm told it's the same people who actually have done serious damage to. Uh, CIA operations in China over the last couple of years uh, yes. that, uh, you know, they, they've managed to really crack down yes. on... Yes, the, the uh, CIA on, operations. On, yeah, that's my understanding. So, so you're not playing around here. And here in this country, ever since 9-11, uh, the U.S. has, you know, they have... Uh, quite extraordinary surveillance powers uh, and they don't play around uh, and they they arrest people all the time here and now for uh, even tiptoeing into uh, what they call stealing national security secrets. So, so honestly one of my main worries was that I was going to end up getting arrested by some idiot uh, you know, U.S. intelligence guy who didn't, you know, doesn't understand what journalists do, uh, and 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 that was the concern of, of many of my U.S. intelligence uh, sources too. Was that uh, you know some guy sitting in some windowless room could misinterpret what I was doing, and uh, and then you know all bets were off. So I was very strongly recommended. That very strongly not to go to Shanghai, which I was invited to go to meet these people, and not to take any money. Uh, and, and I, I I didn't do either, but I also, you know, I wanted to know who these guys were. So as a journalist, I I, I had a couple choices. I could either meet them, so that there was a you know a, a human being on the other end. Instead of just a computer, you know, email exchange, uh, or I could 
uh, create some kind of paper trail, like a bank transaction, which might be able to use to trace back who these people were. But if I did either one of them, then I was in, uh, uh, you know, I was getting into very deep shark-infested waters. Uh, and uh, I, I did contact the, the FBI uh, here, the people responsible for Chinese recruitment of Americans as spies. It's the, the, the Foreign Counterintelligence Division of the FBI, and that, uh, because the CIA is not allowed to operate in the U.S. Uh, so it's 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 the job of the counterintelligence bureau of the FBI to to follow these things. I did meet with them. They did confirm who these people were, but they said uh, they said yes. You know you're right. They're trying to recruit you. Uh, but then they said this. They said you you either have to work with us and not write any story and let us control the whole operation from now forward, uh, or we can't have anything to do with it. And uh, so obviously I couldn't do that. You know, that's not yeah. my job to work as an asset for a government. But that's why I contacted them in the first place, because the Chinese wanted me to do just that. So I wasn't, you know, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that for any government. And uh, so that was kind of the end of it. But it did strike me what idiots the U.S. intelligence were, too. It took them a year to get back in touch with me. I, I have very good sources in U.S. intelligence. I passed this information on fully, all the email exchanges, because I wanted to make sure black and white that there was a paper trail showing that I was not Trying, you know, trying to work for the Chinese intelligence. It took the FBI a year to get back in touch with me. If I if I had been up to some kind of no good, I could have I could have done a lot in that. Yeah, year, yeah, you know? yeah, of course. Uh, and, and, uh, so it's not very impressive on both sides. You know, I wasn't impressed by the Chinese uh, spy tradecraft, but I wasn't impressed by the U.S. Uh, uh, spy tradecraft either.